Let me now share with you one of the most important parts of this lesson. Now take a look at this chart. What you see in front of you is the stock market for the last 10 years up to where we are now, 2019. And this is based on the S&P 500 ETF, the spider, okay? So you can see that 10 years ago, the SPY ETF was selling at about $70. And as of today, we are now selling at about $290. In fact, uh, we are actually very close to $300 right now. So in the last 10 years, the index, the ETF, has returned 262%. Now, it doesn't matter what method you use. Met so it doesn't matter what method you use. For example, if you use the buy and hold method or dollar cost averaging, you would have simply bought it 10 years ago and you close your eyes and you keep buying it as it went up and you open your eyes today, you make a lot of money. If you use the trend following method that you've learned in the previous parts of my lesson, you will buy on the uptrend and sell on the downtrend based on the moving averages, right? So you have bought over there when the 50 crossed above the 150 moving average, you have sold over there, bought back over there, sold over there, bought over there, sold over there, bought back here, and you'll be here. So whether, again, you're buying and holding, you're doing dollar cost averaging, or you're following the trend, whatever method you use, you would have made money in the last 10 years. In fact, a blind one-legged monkey could have made money in the markets. But here's the sad reality. Do you think most retail investors out there made money in the last 10 years? I can tell you the answer is no. Most retail investors did not make any money at all in the last 10 years. Why? Why didn't they make money? The stock market was going up for 10 years. And the only reason people did not make money is because they did not invest. They did not enter the market or they got out, never got back in. And why did they do that? Because they made a cardinal mistake of investing, which is they read the opinions of other people in the mainstream news. Now, if you keep reading the mainstream news and you read opinions of experts, you will always make the wrong decisions. Let me show you the news headlines of the last 10 years. Let's take a look right now. Okay, let's begin with July 2010. And again, if you look at the charts, 2010, was over here, 2010, was the beginning of this huge run in the stock markets, right? Now let's look at the headline from 2010. And this is the New York Times under the money section. What does it say under strategies? A market forecast that says, take cover. With the stock market lurching again, plenty of investors are nervous and some are downright bearish. Then there's Robert Preacher, this guy, right? This expert, right? The market forecaster and social theorist who is in another, in another league entirely. Mr. Preacher is convinced that we have entered a market decline of staggering proportions, perhaps the biggest of the last 300 years. Holy shit. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If you had read this crap, this opinion of this expert that we're going to crash, would you have bought stocks in 2010? No, you would not. And as a result, you have missed out on a 200% gain in the stock market in the last 10 years. Let's move on to the next year, which is 2011. In 2011, over here you can see the date 2011 here. This was USA Today economy. S&P lowers its outlook. Could US default on its debt? So at that time, the talk was all about the U.S. debt ceiling, that you know the federal government was not going to raise the debt ceiling, the U.S. government can't pay its debts, and the whole economy may collapse. So because of that fear, many people did not dare to buy U.S. stocks. And sure enough, guess what? The stock market kept going up. The next year was 2012. And this time, besides the U.S. debt problem, we had the European debt crisis, right? This was from CNBC. It says, Europe debt defaults are poised to rattle stocks. So not only is the US having a debt problem, Europe is having a debt crisis, right? So when you read all this news, guess what? You'll never dare to invest in a stock market. And the more you have fear, the more the market keeps going up. So this was 2012. How about the next year, 2013? This is from Bloomberg. So it comes from all the news. A US default seen as catastrophe dwarfing Lehman's fall. 
So they say, if you think that Lehman Brothers collapse was bad in 2009, sorry, 2008, this is going to be worse. The stock market is going to crash because of the US uh, debt default in 2013. And then you got this article with this, another expert over here in 2013 says, Doomsday poll, 87% risk of stock crash by the end of the year. And in 2013, did the stock market crash? No, it went up over 20%. And again, by reading this news, mainstream news, you would not have gotten into the market or you have gotten out of the market and missed the ride. Or worse, you shorted the market, you have lost money, right? Now, the next year, 2015, this guy called Stockman. Now imagine, this guy is called Stockman. How can you not listen to a guy called Stockman? He's born to talk about stocks, right? David Stockman. What did he say? Stocks and bonds will crash soon. Yeah, when? <laughs> when you die? Right. So this was in 2015. Sure enough, the market went up even higher. Okay. And in 2016, the, the following year, Fortune magazine said, here comes the biggest stock market crash in a generation. Whoa. Right. <laughs> and finally, this was in 2018, which was last year why markets are still heading for a crash. So notice that every year for the last 10 years, the mainstream media will tell you the stock market will crash this year. You know, guess what? A broken clock is right twice a day, right? So in other words, all these predictions from mainstream news is all bullshit, it's all crap. The reason they've got these provocative headlines is to sell their newspapers. And the more you listen to these news, the more you're going to miss on opportunities. Now, here's the funny thing. The more that people think the stock market is going to crash, the more you keep going up. Let me quote one of the greatest investors of all time, John Templeton, right? And he said something really, really powerful. He said, bull markets are born on pessimism, grow on skepticism, mature on optimism, and die on euphoria. In other words, yes, the stock market, what goes up will always come down. Bull markets don't last forever they will always lead to a bear market. You can't have summer forever. Eventually, winter will come. Eventually, the market will crash 30 to 50%. But here's the funny thing. The market tends to crash when people least expect it. When everyone thinks the market is going to go up forever, like Bitcoin, that's when it crashes. So the market will only crash when there's euphoria. When everyone thinks it's going to go up, when you hear the mainstream news says the market is going to go up, that's when it's going to crash. And that's when I'm going to make another fortune by shorting the market and buying stocks when they're dirt cheap all over again. So thank you for watching. Hope you learned something from this. May the markets be with you. Don't listen to the mainstream news. Instead, follow the trend and follow the fundamentals of companies. Adam Koo here. See you soon. Hi, so if you liked the video, you can subscribe for more videos by clicking the subscribe button. If you want to find out more about our live training courses in Asia, go to wealthacademyglobal.com for online professional stock and forex trading courses. You can go to piranaprofits.com. So this is Adam Koo and I'll see you soon.